First, I also want to just uh, give you an opportunity if you want to react. I also, of course, see you have experienced editors among us, for instance, uh, uh, Father Martin Meyer is the former editor of Stimmen der Zeit. So, uh, and so, anybody want to react or yes? Sir. Uh, well, I react because Stefan asked me to do so. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, congratulations uh, uh, for uh, uh, launching uh, this uh, uh, journal. Uh, I, when I was editor of Stimmen der Zeit, I used to quote the first German chess with uh, Petrus Canisius, who once said in Germany in the 16th century times of the Reformation, a Jesuit writer is as much worth as ten professors. <laughs> and of course, professors didn't like this too much, but uh, uh, he expressed uh, something uh, uh, very uh, true that uh, the divulgation uh, of uh, uh, knowledge and of opinions uh, is of course much bigger by uh, publication, by uh, review, than uh, uh, by, by only uh, teaching. Uh, and a second, uh, uh, I would not say advice, but a second experience I want to share, uh, uh, review becomes interesting if it provokes discussion and uh, sometimes even controversial discussion. Uh, I had in my review uh, quite well-known intervener several times uh, who in his former life uh, uh, had the name of Cardinal Josef Ratzinger <laughs> and uh, he opened a debate for example with uh, Cardinal Kasper on ecclesiology. Uh, Kardinal Kasper published an article in Stimme der Zeit on uh, he responded already to uh, uh, a discussion uh, launched by Kardinal Ratzinger and it was a kind of ping pong uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, this uh, gained uh, public attention also in the secular media in, uh, uh, in Germany I proposed my colleague uh, of America magazine Tom Rees to take up this discussion and it was partly for this that he finally had to resign. <laughs> it, it became uh, famous as uh, the debate of the Cardinals. Uh, and of course, Stefan was referring to this. Uh, it's an issue of discernment. And uh, uh, you have uh, limits, uh, you have other limits uh, with. Uh, uh, the Ritchie uh, uh, Institute Journal than I had with Stimmen der Zeit, but uh, uh, go up to the limits. Uh, this will uh, make uh, the journal interesting and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, awake curiosity. Uh, that's just what I wanted to share from uh, my experience. Thank you. Great. Pardon. Anybody else also wants to share or react what we had? Otherwise, other challenge now we face is with uh, uh, marketing. I also must uh, admit I would be glad not to have so much to do with marketing, but I think it is an issue. Uh, I do think we have good quality articles, but especially we want to reach out through the online channel to more people. So uh, we are glad that to share with you that we made a number of, kind of, took a number of actions to kind of improve this uh, situation to reach out to more people. So, as Brian just disappeared, also Brian is actually in charge uh, in our team for this, but uh, as also uh, from the beginning, Mark was advising, so maybe. Uh, Mark, you may share, say, a few words what we now do, also in, and before the end of the year, in terms of marketing of the journal. Uh, thank you. Um, so, just very basically, there's an intention to increase the visibility of the journal. Um, everyone who contributes, um, contributes so that their contributions are read, so that there is impact 
so that people will think and reflect and perhaps even debate about the um, issues involved. And so that um, puts the onus on us to increase the visibility. So at its most basic level, we're pushing the journal out notifications um, about deadlines and launches and events um, related to the journal out through social media. Uh, various channels, newsletter, and then social media channels proper. Another area, um, because it's an online journal and it's uh, accessible through the website, is uh, transforming the website to be very journal friendly. Um, you know, partnered or kind of married to that objective is to build out a database of scholars, um, both those who have already been involved with the journal to date um, and those who we've identified that we'd like to get involved with the journal due to their backgrounds uh, or their experience. And this will be a living database, um, one that um, certainly our team, um, but also those who uh, support the journal outside of the institute um, can definitely help uh, build out. And then, you know, with that database, we'll be reaching out um, to solicit contributions that will have the kind of impact that um, Father Meyer was talking about. Um, you know, to, to have the journal be a place where interesting conversations in this context of encounter between the East and West can take place. Um, so as, a, as just a very brief summary, um, the details um, about the journal, uh, calls for papers, um, events like this, uh, and launches um, will be pushed out through various channels, and you can get access to those channels through the MRI website. And then there will be a polishing of the website itself um, to make sure that whoever visits the um, Macau Regional Institute website will be able to get involved with the journal as easily as possible, as well as access all of the historical materials, past issues, um, and things like that uh, very easily. And then we'll have a database where we um, basically build out the contributor base um, for the journal. And that'll be a living document that we're in the process of using and building out uh, right now. So. Okay, so that's about it. Um, anybody want, uh, yeah, uh, to get? I just have two simple questions. Uh, I see on the, the very bottom here, the lower uh, kind of uh, dark gray, uh, one, two, three, four, five. It says China, Southeast Asia, uh, probably a leadership or something. I live in Southeast Asia, and I would be happy to contribute. Uh, the focus would be more on, say, Vietnam and Cambodia. Is it something you would be interested in? is the first question. And the second, would you be okay with something 3,000 words instead of 5,000 words? I mean, that's very important to your your, your structure. Uh, maybe you can let me know. No, absolutely, we're, we're, we would be interested. Um, one, one proof of this is an interview that I did a couple of issues ago uh, with uh, Archbishop, now Cardinal Hollerick, uh, regarding service learning and his experiences in taking students from Sophia University in Japan to uh, mountain villages in Thailand and where he described the culture there and the experiences the students had and its transformative impact. So I mean for heaven's sake this would be what you're describing would be perfect you know if we had, uh, I got a chance just want to very briefly to say something there is a difference between academic writing and writing for this journal. This is, uh, we really, the, the word in our mission statement that Mark showed earlier today uh, is, it says intellectual, and we mean it, and as you all, I'm sure, know, sometimes painfully, uh, intellectuals are hard to find in academia anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, in a sense, so I mean, how to figure out how, even if your academic background and you have all the expertise, how to connect with a uh, with a, a non-academic audience. We don't want to get caught in the trap where you have to have a PhD in order to read our journal. They, so we really do mean this. this. is one of the reasons why the limitations on space, 3,000 points, etc., are meant to encourage us to, to think concretely about how to communicate in ways that can potentially reach a larger audience. And that, that's what we're aiming for. At the same time, there has to be the, the hidden structure behind all this has to be academically rigorous, and so we work on that as well. So the tension between those two things is something that makes the peer review process as interesting as it sometimes is. <laughs> right. Anybody else? So I'm also glad to share, if I may, that uh, as a uh, father. Uh, Fernando Aspiros is among us, uh, director for the Richie uh, Social Services. So we plan for next year also to follow up on uh, Laudato C, so that really have that as a, uh, a, a common project. Uh, he has this nice term about uh, these institutions here, La Manzana de las Luces. So, uh, this institution, Casa Ricci Social Services, the Ricci Institute, but also USJ, uh, now working together, uh, hopefully as a lighthouse. So also in this area of uh, environmental protection, that's what we have in mind for, for next year. So as a common a project. And then that the other also, we, we don't have to uh, artificially to extend this session, but also glad, so for instance, to share with the uh, presence of uh, Bishop Anton Jamnik is most appreciated, but behind is also this link to the University of Ljubljana. So we talk about 40,000 uh, students, if I may, or this in this region. So sometimes we dream here about the critical mass of students. We, uh, to not seem to reach, but we, we want them also to have through the online journal, online courses, also to connect uh, to universities, in this case also state universities, which have much resources and also make it meaningful that everybody, because everybody wants to come to fly to Macau, it is not possible. So also make better use of these common resources in the future. If you want to uh, also say, uh, um, Brian, uh, here. <laughs> okay, so here, here we are. Yeah. So if you want to. Thank you, Dr. Stefan. It was, uh, he was uh, Stefan who was in Ljubljana before two years in our university, also academy. And uh, theology faculty in Ljubljana is a member of state university. It's not seminary and theology faculty, but member of state university. And in Ljubljana, it is about altogether more than 40,000, 40,000 students. So, uh, when he was in Ljubljana, he met our professors uh, and uh, also some students, yes, not all of them, but it was, uh, they were press and the lecture was excellent, as Stephen always did. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we arranged that we will be in touch and that we will be online education, so this uh, process of journal and also to educational this, yes. And uh, uh, that would be because of, of course it is uh, to expand it to Canto Macau, but online we can be Ljubljana Macau. So, and also I met the rector of university, so no theology faculty, but the rector of university of Ljubljana. He, did, he also supported this project. He supported strongly this project. And another idea is uh, because, you know, in the Europe we have this Erasmus program, and because Slovenia is just in the middle of Europe, they are coming from Poland, 
Czech Republic, Slovakia, the time from Austria, Italy, uh, also from Belgium, from uh, Ireland. So we have maybe five, six thousand students from other countries in Europe. Uh, and uh, the language is uh, Slovenia is so small, so English, of course, Italian, German. Then <coughs> Spanish is now very popular, but in these three languages, but not in Chinese <laughs> yet, yet, I hope. Yeah. So I'm grateful for this cooperation and I'm grateful. Stefan, who was in Ljubljana, professor, really knows him. This, as I said, in the morning. This personal contact is so, so important with our professors, so we, professors will support uh, this project. And I'm very, very happy that also rector of university, so rector of 40,000 students, supported this project. So thank you very much and I hope that you will come very soon to Ljubljana and some of you from China from states, from Europe, Germany, from other countries, all, uh, the world becoming very small, and especially uh, you are warmly invited, of course, from this part, from China, as you said, from Cambodia, Vietnam, also Slovenian uh, history of church and missionary in the last centuries, they came from Slovenia to Macau, from Macau to Taiwan, or to Japan, or to, or to Vietnam especially. It is the process of one Silesian who is now in process of beatification. He was in Vietnam. So, we are, it is, you are the gift for us. And because the situation is changing very fast, as it was in the past, in the last centuries, that they can missionary from missionary from Europe to Asia. Now I hope that you will come to Europe. So thank you very much and for this cooperation with the College Institute. Okay, I think uh, yeah, appreciate that. Uh, uh, yes, I don't know if this I'm asking too much. No, I'm, on, I'm thinking about Macau because in the, at the top of, the, of this building is the Macau Slim International. <laughs> I know this is a wide, uh, worldwide thing, but how this journal can help more people in Macau to be connected? No? Uh, that will mean to have another level that is not academical but maybe educational open to university students, because you don't have many scholars in Macau. Uh, open a level where there are forums or discussions or uh, small articles attached to the big one. I don't know. Uh, this is something that is very complex, requires a lot of work, but maybe worth it to think as a way of developing this in a platform where more people in Macau, especially young people or in Hong Kong, can, can be uh, Right. Maybe here I uh, share that we had also uh, young people from Hong Kong coming from our YN colleges and so we want to start also on the level of the middle schools. We have here two high schools, so it's uh, Hoisin, it's Estrella do Mar and Matteo Ricci School and we have a plan, we have a very artistically gifted uh, uh, young Jesuit brother for the Howard II uh, just joined the Rich Institute as a member and we thought uh, it's a unique chance for instance we had 70 people from Hong Kong coming, the professors and the students and it's always a very rewarding encounter but self-critically sometimes we thought we must have the material for instance explaining the life of Richie much more geared to the young people so I thought uh, how it was this gift with a uh, PPT so to reach these people who are now from 12 to 18 years old already in this message. Then it is, it will uh, be our first duty to reach out more to the students of other universities in Macau. That's true. So we have uh, City University, 
First, I also think, first of all, it is the University of St. Joseph because we have this protocol on May 4th to 16th and because, honestly speaking, whatever you make, you know, of course, uh, I could also for our team, uh, especially Brian uh, and then uh, Mark, we do all to reach out to more people, but it's really much more difficult if you do something like this in Beijing, always crowds of people coming. So to really then use much more online courses is really important. Because you have this phenomenon of jealousy among the universities. We have this uh, phenomenon that we have a prominent sinologist from Nicola Standard. And it was just not, it was amazing to see how scholars of other universities just did not want to put their feet into the Uni University of St. Joseph. And at the moment they say, oh, he should come to the University of Macau. And see. So you have still this phenomenon of jealousy among these institutions. So uh, I hope also we can really cooperate. I, I, we know we have to improve on this level, so make it relevant locally. <clears throat> but for me, again, a main medium is through uh, online. Yeah, I, I, was, I was talking about online, and I was not talking about a physical encounter, but how this online magazine can become also an online platform for more students yeah. to have more discussions and to become more educational without losing the academic level. No? Yeah, that, that's the thing that I thought I heard in what you had to say that came through real strongly to me and that is to try to design some platforms whether out online or whether they might even show up in the print copy of where you know students might be given a topic or a question and then you get multiple responses shorter responses you know and then you know publish a handful of the best of these as a way of you know drawing students in further engagement, uh, helping students generally here. And I, I like the local focus of this, that, that we can get students in Macau taking ownership of this. I think that's very important. Right. And then maybe three things I want to say. One is I think the key for us is we are about to sign an agreement with the University of St. Joseph exactly on this level. So, of development of courses, and then we have two major networks based just by coincidence in Geneva. The one is Jesuit Worldwide Learning, uh, JWL.org. They have also enormous also resources uh, in, uh, in Europe for courses that geared for those left behind or the marginalized, uh, and the other is Globethics.net. They have maybe the largest kind of collection on ethical resources uh, in the world. But they are very eager really to cooperate. The director now is an African uh, friend and priest, uh, Obiora Ike. And he also claims there's a big interest all over Africa also mm. on this uh, topic, as of course the Chinese are so active now in uh, mm. China. So especially just with World Learning and Global Ethics Net, Kind of two other networks we want to uh, cooperate with. Um, I was just going to say, in response to Father Fernando's point, um, the word that came to mind is content hub. And you see this um, with some publications that historically were print publications. And as they moved online, they preserved the print option um, while also building out a platform of related content, um, both to increase accessibility um, and to increase the avenues of contribution. So if somebody wants to write a 3,000-word article um, for the journal, um, there would be particular standards for that. If they wanted to contribute something within within the scope of the three platforms, but say 500 words, 750 words, 
more along the lines of like a, an average news article or op-ed, um, then there may be a way to do that. Yeah. And you know, that would, like you said, that would take work. It would take some planning. And it would also take quite a bit of promotion. But that might be a way to get you know younger younger people with ideas and experiences, um, accessible ways to start to contribute. And you know, if you can go onto campus and say, does anyone contribute? Is there a newspaper on campus? Okay, you might be involved with that, but you could also be involved with this, right? They could become a columnist, they could become a regular contributor, things like that. So there's definitely options in that area. Um, so the, the, the word that came to mind is a content hub, with the journal kind of as the central piece of that, but then you find ways to increase accessibility for contributions to you know, up-and-coming thinkers and scholars. And so, Certainly, something to to put on the horizon of discernment. I think. Yeah, um, uh, just one suggestion. Uh, I mean, when I look at, uh, I really like the print version, you know, the bilingual format. Uh, but when I look at the online format, it's almost like a direct download from the PDF version. I'm just thinking about my students in, back in the U.S. who might not be always bilingual. So I'm wondering, on, you, uh, on, on the online platform, would you be able to create uh, some kind of, uh, in a web page format, uh, Chinese and English word that, that are separate? Uh, so I think that makes it easier, maybe for the non-bilingual reader to use the material more effectively. Uh, and, and the other question I have is, you know, given that focus on the local and global world, uh, uh, there's also a much older journal like the Review of Culture. Uh, so it seems to me that some of the historical paper in Richie Journal can also go there as well. So, what, what, what is the working relationship? A com competitive, collaborative, or uh, you know how? We, because I know that journal, they are always looking for article uh, on a church or, or, or the Christian, you know, Bishop history in a as well. So I'm just curious about you know that kind of uh, how how would you envision that working relationship? First, I think uh, Barry is our uh, uh, our IT uh, will take note of this, so uh, it's great to work with Barry on, on this. Uh, like that's a good suggestion. And uh, for the other is our core mission is this Macau as a place of encounter. Also, as a, first as the door to China, uh, place of missionaries. All this is our core business, so to speak. However, I think it was in the mind of the provincial, they knew I'm not a historian, you see. Uh, sorry for that, you know, but that we want, of course, to be faithful to this mission. So, like already announcing this ACTA Pekinanza, is a huge investment uh, over, say, 20 years to get that bloody four volumes uh, published. Uh, speak about with uh, uh, Anthony Ursula, is the director, how much. Uh, it took him to get the, the second bloody module out. And so we really want to be faithful to this uh, task. But then, as uh, was quoted already, that uh, Umberto Eco felt this charism. It's not just a museum, but make that relevant. For instance, like the last issue was on Ida Ilu, the Belt and Road Initiative. So that this means something, for instance, for our now ability for cross-cultural communication. So we want to strike this balance, but we always welcome this uh, kind of uh, historic uh, view. Uh, and there's a flourishing uh, uh, scholarship of this. So, and I think here we really we are privileged to have Thierry uh, Menard from the Menard um, as an advisor on this issue. Sorry, I'm <laughs> talking again. Okay. Uh, Stefan, he sent me before a few years uh, some copies uh, of uh, journal, and it was in our li library. So, and students, of course, they are going to library and professors, and they asked me about this, and they asked me if it is possible to study in Macau, and asked me what it is, because about this word. So, may I ask you that you will, these online courses will be absolutely nice and also online journal and journal which is printed. So 
Now I will uh, take one copy of uh, you gave me an interview with Jean Claude in its last copy to our library and I will send it also to the rector of the university. Uh, it is possible to get also short presentation for for rector of university and uh, somebody who is university responsible for Erasmus program, so it means that we will be in Europe, not just in Slovenia, and uh, also presentation, presentation like today, maybe, I don't know, in this way, that will be clear for students and professors and director that students will get, oh yes, this is absolutely interesting. I am so sure, really, I am absolutely sure that, pretty sure that uh, Macau has, in a global world, between Asia, China, now Sweden, Japan, really, and China in this area, because Macau was historically so important, and this inspiration for Europe, I'm deeply sure. So, if you will get this, and when you will be in Europe, to personally present to professors, to students, to lecture, because absolutely, I know internet is absolutely, it's very good. It is good if you, if you are using it, but when you will come, personal presentation as it was at Stefan Ross in Ljubljana, its professors and academy, it was amazing for all of us. Sure, thank you. Uh, I'm sure also Paul Tierminal will be happy to make his presentation there. <laughs> right. No, thank you very much for your uh, constructive feedback. Now uh, we make a last break and then we at 2.45 we have our last and fifth plenary session about redefining mission globally. Uh, and we conclude with the reflections and uh, I already want to announce it should not be restricted to the uh, four last speakers but really each one of you uh, should feel thrilled to come up with a concluding reflection or can be very much also challenging as where you have not been maybe satisfied. So it's always a unique mix we have in Macau. Yes, this European tradition we have, which is always the one, one third Chinese, uh, one third European, and the rest of the world. So each one should feel um, kind of encouraged and uh, to share her or his reflection in the last round. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you.